Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at building your own PC. In this episode specifically, we're taking a look at the case. So you've got your motherboard all put together now. The CPU is inside, the fan is on. You need something to put it in. Now, when we put this together, we made sure to choose a motherboard that actually had the right number of slots that we were going to need to put in all the components, like the sound card and the video card and whatnot, all of the proper other components that we needed to connect uh, the fans and the hard drives and all that other stuff that goes in here. And we end up with a motherboard that's a specific shape and size here. In this case, it's something called ATX. Now, you might be able to get a motherboard that's a little bit smaller, known as a micro ATX. And in that case, you wouldn't need to have a case that's this big in order to uh, fit it in. You might be able to get away with a smaller case. Now, if you have something that's a full ATX size motherboard, you won't be able to fit it into a case designed for a micro ATX case. So it is important to make sure that you match the two up. Other things you want to check for when you're buying the case is that it has enough bays inside for the hard drives and it has enough bays for the optical drives you want to put in and that it's easy to get to everything inside the case. You don't want a case that's difficult to move around inside and get your fingers into because that would be just a pain. While older cases had a removable panel that wrapped all the way around the outside of the computer, most modern cases just have a single panel on the side that slides off. To get access to it, you'd find the screws on the back that hold it in place and remove them. After you remove the screws, the side panels should just slide back and off. Now the motherboard will mount on the back plate here on the back of the case. In this case, we have a bunch of screw holes here, but we don't want to connect the motherboard directly to these screw holes. In this case, we'll need something called standoffs. Now the motherboard we configured early in the series also has holes on the outside of the motherboard for connecting to the back of the case. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to make sure that the standoffs that we screw into the holes on the plate on the back match these ones in the location. Before you put the motherboard in, check out this section at the back. This is where all your connectors will come out, the USB, audio, Ethernet, all of that sort of thing. Typically, your motherboard comes with a protective plate that uh, conforms to the back panel of your motherboard. So what you want to do is you want to stick it into the case from the inside and push it gently into place. Then when you put the motherboard in, be sure to line it up with those holes. Position the motherboard carefully over the screw holes. Then use your screwdriver to secure the motherboard in place against the standoffs you've just installed. Secure everything into place, but don't crank down too hard because you don't want to break the board. The motherboard will also have something called front panel connectors. These are things like the power switch, the reset switch, lights that are on the front, that sort of thing. And inside the case, you'll generally have a bunch of little connectors that will connect to these things. These things are typically color-coded these days, so you, it should be a fairly easy match. But check inside with the manual to make sure that you're setting it up correctly. Modern cases may also have connectors on the front for HD audio, firewire, and USB connectors. Make sure that you find the spots on the board for these and connect these as well, if you have them. In most cases, these connectors have an odd number of pins or a keying connection, so they'll only work in one particular way. Your case may also have some built-in cooling fans, so you want to take the connectors that come with the case and attach them to the motherboard and the space for cooling fans. Now that you have the motherboard in place and all of the connectors connected, you're ready to move on to the next step in this process, which is installing the power supply and then the other components. Don't forget to check out the other parts in the series where we'll show that happening, and don't forget to check out butterscotch.com for all the show notes on this series.